my YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm actually redoing a review video on these eyepieces that I did before. If you had seen the video before, I actually deleted it uh, because I kind of made a mistake in some of my wording in the video and also in my description. But even if I took it out of the description, it was still in the video, so I wanted to remove it. Uh, plus, when I was doing the first review on these eyepieces, I remember now that when I looked at the moon, it was a full bright moon. And if you're not familiar with looking at very bright objects uh, when you're doing, you know, observing astronomically or uh, taking pictures, the brighter it is, the more likely chance that that light's going to either reflect or you're going to get chromatic aberration in, lens, uh, in the eyepieces. Um, so tonight I did something a little different. Uh, it was kind of cloudy out, but every good 15 and 20 minutes or so I was able to get a little glimpse of the moon. So I retook this scope out. I didn't take the uh, go-to mount out. I took this one out. Uh, but this time I used a moon filter and a UHC filter. And I wanted to kind of just test something. Uh, and then, of course, I looked at it without. I didn't take any pictures. I just wanted to see for myself if it was because of the full moon why it was getting uh, either reflection or chromatic aberration. Again, there was a very little hint of chromatic aberration without the filters. Um, but this time it was a full moon. There was no reflection in the glass, which was really, really nice this time. Uh, with the filters, though, it, it was really, really nice, actually. It made viewing the moon uh, really, like, spectacular. So, and one of the main reasons why I did the review in the first place was because I read online that these were all made out of plastic. Like, literally, the glass was plastic, the, the frame was plastic. Um, but this is metal. Um, this could be plastic, but it feels like metal. Um, it has a rubber eye guard. Um, it's got a 62 degree apparent field of view. Um, these are HD eyepieces. Uh, it comes in either a set or you can buy them separately. Um, I'll provide the link either way. I bought it as a set. Uh, I don't remember exactly the price I paid. It was probably around 20 something dollars. So it's not really that bad. It's a affordable eyepiece. It's really, really nice. Um, if you were to buy these separately, like if or I'm talking like a name brand like Celestron or Mead or Orion, you're going to be paying anywhere from forty to sixty dollars for just one of these things. So, um, so Subini they make you know telescope accessories and stuff at really affordable prices. Um, as most people know, astronomy and astrophotography is a very expensive hobby. So if you're looking for affordable eyepieces, this is actually a really decent set. Um, like I said, the quality of the eyepiece is pretty nice. Um, it is glass. Uh, it's multi-coated. It's um, you get a pretty decent image. I've gotten them both in both scopes. Uh, again, at first I said these may not be good for uh, imaging, but now that I think about it, when I did the first review, I was looking at a full moon. So actually, they might actually be pretty good after all. So, um, but I I can't give you my solid word on that because I haven't done it yet. Uh, but as far as, as far as observing is concerned and looking at the moon or stars and nebulas and stuff, uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend these. It was a, a good investment. And uh, I would do it again, you know, if I, in, in a heartbeat. They're a really, really nice set of eyepieces. Um, you can buy them separately, like I said, but I think it was cheaper if you bought the whole set. The second eyepiece was the 40 millimeter uh, Plossel eyepiece. Um, this is all metal, does have a rubber grip and the rubber eye kit. Um, this one I basically got because um, I have a, a 32 uh, millimeter, but I wanted something a little wider so I could look at the, a larger portion of the, the night sky. Um, either with or without a filter on this, it was pretty good. Um, with a UHC filter or the, um, I have an 82A blue, it's a light blue filter. Um, this honestly made the night sky look really, really amazing. Um, with the UHC filter, you were able to actually see stars that you couldn't see with the naked eye. You know, if you just look up there, you really can't see much because of all the light pollution stuff. Um, so viewing it with this was uh, incredible. So, and then with the 82A filter that I had, it was really, really nice. So again, this is these are eyepieces made by Savoni. Um, Pretty, pretty decent eyepieces, actually. And again, something like this, if you bought it from Mead or Ryan or Celestron or something like that, um, you'd honestly be paying about 
between forty and a hundred dollars, depending on you know what you're buying, the the aperture of the eyepiece and the uh, and things like that. So, I mean, I would recommend these. Um, I do give them five out of five stars for one quality um, of the product itself. Um, observing quality is really really nice. So, again, I can't say how they are for imaging because I didn't test them for imaging. Uh, I was at that time I. I was just more into observing the night sky and I wanted uh, a variety of eyepieces so I could just, you know, swap out and look and, and do more observing than I was imaging. So, and that was one of the reasons why I also got them as well, because uh, I wanted to add some eyepieces to my collection. So, if you're looking for affordable eyepieces, you know, and decent eyepieces are really, really nice, um, I'd recommend getting them. I really would. I, again, I would buy them again if I had to. They're not bad. This one's really, really nice, actually. If you want something to look at the uh, a large portion of the night sky, this one's a really good one. And this one was only, I think, like twelve dollars. I think I think it maybe thirteen. But it was a really, really nice eyepiece. So again, uh, these are the eyepiece sets that I did the review for before, and I'm sorry I deleted it, but I wanted to kind of correct that because. That was something that I made a mistake on, so and I didn't want anybody getting the wrong impression about these eyepieces. Um, so I'm here to basically fix it. Again, good eyepieces, uh, affordable. Uh, for observing, they're really, really amazing. They're not bad. Um, the four, I found the only thing that, because like, it exceeded my telescope's uh, magnification, so but I was able to still see Saturn. But I think if I had a go-to mount that was able to track it, I'd be able to see a little more clearly. This one's just a little hard to get in focus because, it, again, it went over my scope's uh, limitations of highest magnification. So, um, But the 10 and 23 millimeter were really, really nice, actually. And I think when I looked at the moon, I think the, the 23 was the best because you get the whole moon. And the 10 was really nice if you were getting want to get really close up and look at all the craters and stuff. But either way, on a bright moon, a full moon, or a half moon, I would definitely get either some type of moon filter or CLS or uh, UHC filter because it will actually enhance the observing quality by 100%. So it's a, still either way, you can, it's still very, very pleasant to look without the filters, but I'm sure with the filters because naturally light pollution in the sky, it's always good to have a some kind of light pollution, you know, suppression filter just in general. But again, these are the eyepieces. And again, I'm sorry I had to redo the review, um, do it all over. But I wanted to correct something that I made a mistake on. So, uh, and that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and definitely please share my channel. Please share the video. Uh, and thanks for watching and clear skies.